the megastars, the millionaires, the masterminds. Seriously wealthy, glamorous and influential. They are the rich and famous. They've made more headlines than most celebrities will in a lifetime. And these stars have caused enough controversy around the world to keep us all amused. Best-selling novelist Dan Brown has experienced the highs and lows of what it is to become a world-famous writer, as well as causing worldwide controversy. He is an American author best known for his thriller fiction novels, but it wasn't until his controversial book, The Da Vinci Code, hit the bookshelves that he really caused a stir. It has provoked popular interest in speculation concerning the Holy Grail legend and the role of Mary Magdalene in the history of Christianity. According to the premise of the novel, Jesus married Mary Magdalene, then had a child whose bloodline continues to this day, with the church at the centre of trying to cover it up. The Da Vinci Code went straight to the top of the New York Times bestseller list during its first week in 2003 and is now credited with being one of the most popular books of all time, with over 60 million copies sold worldwide. Dan's income from the books has given him a neat little profit of approximately $250 million. The novel was then turned into a film directed by Ron Howard and starring award winner actor Tom Hanks. Dan was listed as one of the executive producers of the film, which also snared him a few more dollars out of the $750 million it earned in its first year. Although The Da Vinci Code sounds like a major success, it still created more dramas than Dan would have been prepared for. He has had to fight a number of legal battles, including being accused of plagiarism by author Louis Perdue, in which Lewis claimed similarities between his books and The Da Vinci Code. Dan came out the successor. But it was in 2007 that he found himself being accused of copyright infringement by two historians and authors, Michael Bergent and Richard Lee. They wrote the 1982 non-fiction book The Holy Blood and The Holy Grail and tried to sue Random House, the publisher of The Da Vinci Code, by claiming that Dan stole parts of their work to form the basis of his novel. Well, I, I, need to, I need to say that I don't have any personal animosity towards Dan Brown at all, and our lawsuit was not against Dan Brown, it was against the publishers. And I think the Da Vinci Code did a good thing because it raised a lot of questions in the mind of a very large number of people, but it didn't explore them. And what I'm interested in doing in the Jesus Papers is exploring those questions because I think that's where the insights come from. Lawyers for Random House have said ideas about the life and legacy of Jesus Christ, which the two writers claim was stolen, are so general that they are not protected by copyright. Dan won the case after Britain's Court of Appeal rejected the allegations. But it wasn't just fellow authors that Dan had apparently upset. Just days before the film's premiere, the Catholic Church called on followers to regard both the book and movie with caution. The bishops of the Catholic Church have a responsibility to remind the faithful that things that are said in the Da Vinci Code novel, and which will, I assume, appear in the film uh, are frequently false and misleading with regard to the Catholic faith. So I think the bishops are exercising their pastoral responsibility regarding the faithful. The Da Vinci Code, a novel, but not always treated as such. Instead of recognizing it as fiction, Many readers take it as fact. The Many people who follow the Catholic faith believe that the story is documents. false and misleading, and that Dan's portrayal of the Opus Dei, a controversial conservative sect of the Catholic Church, comes across as savage. Dan said he worked very hard to create a fair and balanced depiction of Opus Dei, and denied that his book was anti-Christian. How much is all this controversy and uproar really worth? For Dan, millions.
With comparisons to screen legend Diane Keaton, Lindsay Lohan declared at 20 that she wanted to win an Oscar by 30. Instead, by 21, she completed two stints in rehab and was arrested for driving under the influence twice. As a freckled-faced youngster, Lindsay delighted Disney audiences in The Parent Trap and starred opposite Jamie Lee Curtis in a remake of Freaky Friday. Playing a wild child daughter who swaps bodies with her uptight mother, Lindsay widened her fan base and became a regular in the tabloids. She shot to fame in the 2014 hit Mean Girls and became a regular at nightclubs with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, despite being younger than 21, the legal drinking age in America. The actress's high quality turns in the films Bobby and Gary Marshall's Georgia Rule were overshadowed by her fast track lifestyle. In January 2007, Lindsay checked into a rehabilitation centre for substance abuse treatment. Four months later, she checked in again, following a weekend during which she crashed her Mercedes and was arrested for suspicion of driving under the influence. Just a few weeks out of rehab, the actress was again arrested for drink driving. This time, she was caught chasing a car driven by her assistant's mother. After a heated exchange between the two in a car park, Lindsay was arrested after failing a breath test and possession of cocaine. She then entered rehab for the third time in a year. Lindsay Lohan was driving the vehicle and she had been driving that vehicle while under the influence of alcohol. They uh, had her uh, complete a field sobriety test, which she did not pass. Uh, at that point, they brought her here to the jail where she submitted to a blood alcohol test. The levels came back to a, 12, a 012 and a 0.13%, so she was uh, charged with driving under the influence. Uh, during the booking process, we also found a small amount of cocaine in her pockets, so she was also charged with possession of a controlled substance. She served one day in jail and was ordered to spend two days in a morgue and two days working in an emergency room to illustrate the potentially fatal consequences of drinking and driving. But still, Lindsay didn't learn. When in Italy in 2008 to receive an award for her contribution to cinema, she was seen swigging champagne from a bottle despite attending regular AA meetings. Trying to pick up the pieces as she returned to work on film and music projects, the controversial teen shocked Hollywood again by recreating Marilyn Monroe's legendary last photo shoot, Nude, for famed photographer Bert Stein. Lindsay doesn't mind spending extravagantly, with most of her $7 million fortune spent on frivolous things. She reportedly spent $137,000 in rehab costs, thousands in legal fees after her multiple drink driving convictions, and over $350,000 on luxury Mercedes and BMWs. The irony? She doesn't even mind crashing them. She's also spent over a million dollars on designer clothes, $70,000 in tanning and hairstyling, and well over $500,000 on partying. I wish I had that kind of money to spend so freely. Her rich kid ways have seen her crash her expensive cars, be hospitalised for exhaustion, and be chastised in public for her lack of commitment to her films. If there's anything Lindsay Lohan knows about, it's how to live up to her controversial reputation. Being a tireless activist and former model, controversial Heather Mills will always be remembered for just one thing, taking Sir Paul McCartney for everything he was worth in their divorce settlement.
digger has been the defining term of the second McCartney marriage, and the British media had no hesitation in telling the world it was his $1.5 billion fortune that was the main attraction to the much younger blonde. The two met while at a charity event in London in 1999. Heather caught the eye of the former Beatle, who, impressed with Heather's work, donated to her organisation. They continued to spend time together and speculation in the press ran wild over their relationship. They announced in 2001 they were engaged and married the following year in Ireland's Castle Leslie in Glasgow. After the nuptials, the British tabloid press went wild with allegations that she had a poor relationship with Paul's grown children with late wife Linda, James, Mary and in particular Stella, who was said to hate Heather with a passion. Throughout her marriage, she continued to campaign for causes such as Peter, where the couple protested against Canadian seal culling and the fur trade. She also took part in a successful Peter campaign to ban the trade in cat and dog fur across the European Union. Heather remains committed to animal rights lending her image to a campaign for animal rights organisation Viva to cut down on meat and dairy products to combat global warming. After four years of marriage, Paul and Heather announced their separation and said in a joint statement, having tried exceptionally hard to make our relationship work given the daily pressures surrounding us, it is with sadness that we have decided to go our separate ways. The announcement followed weeks of speculation in British newspapers about the state of the couple's relationship. In 2006, Paul filed for divorce from Heather, citing unreasonable behaviour, and it wasn't long before the allegations of abuse and her need for compensation hit the headlines. She reportedly demanded a $100 million cash payout, along with at least two homes, two nannies for their daughter Beatrice, medical cover, a personal trainer, round-the-clock bodyguards, household staff and a secretary. Not even her turn as a one-legged contestant on Dancing with the Stars changed public perceptions of her. If anything, it made her even more reviled. Monday, March 19th, TV's sexiest show returns, but Heather Mills will face the ultimate dancing test. My main concerns are keeping my leg on. Dancing with the Stars, Monday, March 19th, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. In line to grab at least a third of McCartney's billion dollar fortune, Heather Mills will become richer beyond her wildest dreams. But in her case, it's very apparent that money won't buy her friends or a reputation for being anything but a gold digger. only one of the world's favourite leading men, but Mel Gibson is also an Academy Award winning director and with earning over $800 million throughout his career, he seems to be one of the most powerful people in Hollywood. When you hear the name Mel Gibson, you automatically think of his days as a big action star. Beginning his career in Australia, he appeared in a number of small Australian dramas. But it was his role as Max Rokotansky in the futuristic Mad Max films that set him up for a career of success and controversy. His portrayal of LAPD detective Martin Riggs in the Lethal Weapon series made Mel popular with the men because of his tough guy behaviour and crazy antics, and a favourite with the women for his manly and rugged looks. 
and he won two Academy Awards for Best Director and Best Picture when he starred in and directed Braveheart. But Mal hasn't just made headlines with his films. He has been known to cause quite a stir and for many different reasons. He was once accused of being a homophobe after an interview with a Spanish newspaper when they asked him what he thought of gay people. But it would be Mel's run-in with the law and his addiction to alcohol that has seen him make more headlines than many of the top leading Hollywood men. His alcohol abuse started at a young age and he has made many attempts to stop drinking, most times failing due to too much stress. He was arrested in Toronto in the 80s for driving with a blood alcohol level over the limit and for rear-ending another car. But Mel, with his typical relaxed style, laughed it off. In 2006, Mel was again arrested for DUI while speeding in his car with an open bottle of alcohol. But it wasn't until he was handcuffed that things for Mel went from bad to worse. In a drunken fit of rage, he made anti-Semitic remarks to one of the arresting officers, asking if they were Jewish, and then went on to say that it was the Jews who were responsible for all the wars in the world. Mel Gibson was arrested on the Pacific Coast Highway with a bottle of tequila in his brand new Lexus, and he was clocked at about 84 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone. Uh, he according to the sheriff's department, was arrested without incident. We're now finding out today that he not only leveled some, what can only be conceived as, or perceived as, what can only be perceived as anti-Semitic comments to the officer, but also some pretty harassing, sexually harassing comments to a female officer. He apologized afterwards to the sheriff's department and to anybody involved who may have been offended admitting to belligerent behaviour and despicable remarks. He also released a second statement specifically apologising for the anti-Semitic remarks and asked to meet with leaders of the Jewish community to begin healing. His success with the film The Passion of the Christ also gave the media something to talk about. Mel not only directed the film, he co-wrote and funded it. Passion of the Christ is based on the last 12 hours of the life of Jesus Christ. The film received mixed reviews, with critics praising it for its realistic depiction of Jesus' final hours, as well as criticism because of the violence, manipulation and charges of anti-Semitism. This became the highest grossing R-rated film of all time, making Mel a very rich man. Even with all the dramas that have surrounded Mel's life, it's safe to say that he is still very talented at what he does. And either he likes to cause controversy or he just knows that it's going to bring him the money. Hugh Grant, he appears to be the perfect gentleman, but is he? Over the years, he has oozed charm and charisma. He comes across as witty and lovable. But being one of Hollywood's leading men, is there a side of Hugh that we don't really know about? Of course there is. Hugh shot to stardom when he starred in the romantic comedy Four Weddings and a Funeral. This breakthrough role paved way for Hugh to appear in more of Hollywood's bigger budget films like Mickey Blue Eyes and Notting Hill, with the then Queen of Hollywood, Julia Roberts. But his characters, in a way, were all the same. In recent years, that has changed. He has added more of a bad boy edge to his approach to acting and showed his sarcastic side in the films Bridget Jones's Diary and About a Boy. He still has that same charm about him, but now in a more manly way. At the beginning of his career, he was just as famous for his love of life as he was for his movies. 
he spent 13 years with model and actress Elizabeth Hurley, a relationship that spent many years in the spotlight as Hugh's fame grew. Although after Liz turned up in that dress to one of Hugh's premieres, it wasn't just Hugh's popularity that grew. It was in the mid-90s though that Hugh's Mr Nice Guy persona took a turn that showed us he did have flaws. He was arrested by LA Vice officers in a residential area not far from Sunset Boulevard. He was caught for misdemeanor lewd conduct in a public place with the world's now most famous prostitute, Divine Brown. He pleaded no contest and was charged almost $2,000. He was placed on two years summary probation and was ordered to complete an AIDS education program. This was around the time we began to notice Hugh's don't care attitude, where he famously said in an interview with Jay Leno, I think you know in life what's a good thing to do and what's a bad thing, and I did a bad thing, and there you have it. Hugh is now also famous for his honesty. Not long after this, surprisingly, Hugh and Liz broke up. He made headlines again when he was arrested in 2007 on allegations of assault made by paparazzi. It was said that Hugh kicked the photographer a number of times, then hurled a container of baked beans at him. But due to insufficient evidence, the charges were dropped. Hugh is also now infamous for his grumpiness, political incorrectness, hostilities with the media and for his bad temper. And has even claimed that acting is not a true calling, but just a job he fell into. But he has managed to land onto a $255 million fortune. Even with his bad temper and grumpy appearance, Hugh still draws big numbers to cinemas. His films have earned more than $2.4 billion worldwide. With his reputation as a grumpy sod, Hugh still manages to attract women. He dated socialite Jemima Khan for three years before they decided to split amicably. Hugh has repeatedly spoken about his boredom with playing the celebrity in the press. But if it continues this way, this is one celebrity the press will not be bored with.